Welcome to Whiskey's A Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and today is Friday, and I am going to be dipping into my collection again and giving you a best of my collection with a certain type of whiskey. And today is going to be a, I guess, a, a testament to my Whiskey Promiscuous channel. I've got a whole bunch of different port finished whiskeys for you. And then I am going to be doing another giveaway. If you are going to be interested in this lineup, winning two ounce samples of everything that is in this lineup, the rules for this giveaway are in the description below and it'll run just like my other one. You have to be in the United States. I can't ship out. You have to be 21 years of age or older. And I am going to get this giveaway all the way through, let's say April 30th. And then on my two year anniversary episode of my Sip It or Skip It segment, I will announce the winner there. All you gotta do is donate $5 to the channel and every $5 will get you one entry into this giveaway. I don't know how successful this is going to be. I don't know if there's any interest in port finished whiskeys of any type. So I just thought I'd throw it out there and see kind of what sticks and just celebrate my two year channel anniversary with a giveaway. So let's jump into it and get to a bottle number one, Glendronic Portwood. This is a single malt scotch. It is coming in at 46% ABV. It has their Glendronic Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso maturation, but the second maturation is going to be Portwood. This is non-age stated, but I think they do seven years in Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez and then finish it for three years in Portwood. I'm not exactly sure. If you know any different, let me know in the comments down below. And I paid $73 for it, and that's going to be in glass one. And just like all of them, I just have these little stickers on here, so at the end, I can reveal them. And I've got a lot of bottles, so I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And bottle number two, we're sticking with a single malt, but this time we have Westland single cask. This is American single malt. Looks like we have a 50% ABV. It's finished in Washington port, and we've got a seven year age statement, and I paid $123.32 for this, that's going to be in glass number two. Moving on to glass number three. We have our first bourbon. This is the Thomas S. Moore. This is coming in at 49.5% ABV. I paid $69.99 for this one. I do believe this is coming out of Barton 1792 and it's finished in port casks. So that's going to be in glass number three. Bottle number four, a Midwinter Nights Dram. This is 49.5%. 3% ABV. This is a blend of straight rye whiskeys, finished in port, and this is Act 11, Scene 9, and I paid $150 for this one. And that's gonna be in glass number four. Let's move on to glass number five. The first of two Irish whiskeys. This is the Red Breast Townie Port Cask Edition. This is their Iberian Series release, their most current Iberian Series release. Matured in bourbon, Oloroso, and then it is finished in the Towny Port Hogsheads. 46% ABV, and I paid $110 for this, and that is going to be in glass number five. Moving on to glass number six, bottle number six. Second and final bourbon on the list, this is the Angel's Envy Cask Strength 2023 release, coming in at 59.1% ABV, finished in port wine barrels, and I paid $300 for this. That will be in a glass number six let's move this thing over here all right and then we are going to move on to the most expensive bottle that i have in my collection and the second irish whiskey on this list red breast 27 this is batch number three 53.1 abv i paid 500 dollars, 509.99 and i do believe it's just their standard oloroso and bourbon and then it is finished in the what do they say? It is finished in the Ruby port casks. And that is going to be in my final glass, glass number seven. I need a bigger board or a bigger table, or maybe a combination of both. So those are the seven I have. I'll go ahead and mix these things up. And I do believe this is going to be extremely sweet. I had a little bit of these uh, the other day, and then I thought, you know, somebody had mentioned 
maybe I should do a port finished series or a port finished flight. And I thought, I don't know if I have a whole lot of port finished whiskeys in my collection. And as it turns out, I have quite a bit. I thought I was going to end up picking up the John J. Bowman port cask or the port finished, uh, but I never did. So I ended up having just these seven. So we're gonna go with that. And again, to celebrate my two year channel anniversary, if you would like to win this flight as is, two ounce samples, all of the rules for this giveaway, are, again, are in the description below. You gotta be 21 years of age or older. It can only be the United States. Every $5 will get you one entry into the giveaway. The giveaway will go all the way through Tuesday, April 30th, and then on May 1st, which is my channel anniversary, my two-year channel anniversary, I'll go ahead and select a winner. All right, let's get these lids off and start this. There are just so many glasses. I don't even know if putting this board up here was a good idea or not. Oh my gosh, it is extremely sweet. I'm gonna move on my right side this time and work my way left. Not a whole lot of, you know, big time notes. I'm just gonna do my best to get through these things, let you know what I think, get them ranked, and then see which one I like the most. And I think they're all gonna end up having a slight prune note to it. Whenever I have port or I think of port wine, I get a prune note. And prunes come across to me as very sweet. And a lot of them that are also going to end up having a red fruit note, heavy on the cherry, heavy on the berries, a little bit of spice. But by the time I get done here, I think this is gonna be overwhelming my palate with a lot of sweetness. So let's get the first one on the palate. I'll tell you what I think. That's a rye and it's a very sweet rye. Good amounts of ABV. It, it kind of gives me a little bit of an effervescence feeling on the tongue, but the prune note is there along with a tremendous amount of pine notes. And just like always, I have my water over here. I'm gonna do my best to rinse in between and just work my way down the line. Glass number two. Comes across as a little bit of astringent and I get a sulfur note, but all of those red berry fruits are there. A little bit of vanilla, good amount of orange zest. And there is a spice in here that is a little bit overwhelming and smells oaky. Let's go ahead and get it out of the palate. Ah, all right, I know what that one is. That has a grapefruit note to it that I really do not like at all. It's zesty, it's oaky, it is sweet, and you definitely get that port in here. I don't think it's sharp in any way, but there is a, a sting to the zest and that grapefruit note that I'm not a big fan of. I can tell you right now, this is gonna be in last place. Let's go ahead and get on to glass number three. Ooh, this smells very sweet, much sweeter than the first two. Bowl of very overripe red fruit with a touch of spice on the back end. Let's go and get this on the palate. All right, that's um, pretty nondescript. I think this is more powerful on the nose than it is on the palate. Good sweetness, good spice. All those red fruits are there. It's just a little bit subdued and not very high on the ABV. Still pretty good. Go on to the next glass. Hmm, having a hard time pulling anything out of this. Okay, maybe a little bit of red fruit is coming through. Some vanilla, some prune. No spice, it seems to be a little bit more sweet than anything else. Got a little sting on the nose, so maybe it's a little bit higher on the ABV. Got a little bit of uh, chocolate and coffee as well. All right, let's get this thing on the palate. Well, that's, that's pretty high in the ABV. Much sweeter than the others, much higher in the ABV. There's a good chocolate note that's coming through and all of those red fruits are there as well. Actually, I like that one pretty good. Gives me a little bit of a different feeling on the tongue and on the side. Uh, I do get the effervescence like I got in uh, that second one or the first one. I can't remember which one it was, but there's a little bit more oak tannin in this than the others, but the overall palette is, is nice. Get a rinse and move on to the next one. Now this, has a tremendous amount of prune notes. 
It's very sweet. It's very rich. It's very malty. And it smells delightful. All of those notes that I like in a sherry finished or a sherry matured whiskey is coming out in this glass. Dark raisins, dates, figs, and plums. And again, very pruny. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the palate. Yeah, that's super sweet, super malty. Raisins, dates, figs, plums. Yeah, that is, uh, that's, that's a blast of sweetness. If you like sherry bombs, you would like that one. Chocolate covered raisins comes to mind when I have that one. Not a whole lot of ABV and extremely sweet. All right, let's go ahead and get on to glass number six. Vanilla, red fruit, a little bit of spice, good amounts of tobacco notes, like the candied corn. That's what I get. Let's get this thing on the palate. And that one's a little bit bitter, not a little bit bitter. That one's a lot bitter on the side of the tongue. That astringent notes coming through, but I still do get some red fruits. There's cherry that's coming through. That pruny note is coming in as well, but it's not as sweet and you throw in a little bit of bitterness. That's gonna vie for down, down on the list quite a bit. I'm not a big fan of that one. All right, let's go ahead and get on to the last glass. Holy cow, this one smells amazing. My initial thought right on the nose, I like the smell of this more than this one. Yeah, this was the raisins, dates, figs, and plums. It's a little bit better put together. There's some malt notes coming through. Chocolate, tobacco, red fruits, but not overly ripe red fruits. Almost like they were like the peak of their ripeness without being too overly ripe. Yeah, it's crazy. After tasting and smelling all these, this one is making my mouth water the most. So let's go ahead and get on to the palate. Oh, wow. That is wonderful. That is chocolate covered cherries with all of the red fruits and a lot of malt. The ABV is very good. That one grows on the palate. A little bit of a chocolate candy bar vibe is coming through, almost like a Three Musketeers, something that doesn't have like the caramel and the nuts in it. And it's all really good chocolate. That one is spectacular. I think I've got like my top two that are pretty close. Boy, that one is just lingering. Just at the, It just keeps going. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I have my notebook in front of me. I'm gonna go back this direction, take some notes, and then come up with an order, and then reveal what I've been drinking. All right, so that was a little bit easier than I thought. I have a pretty good idea of my order. Two of them, my top two, I think the first time through and going back the other direction, we're pretty clear on what my top are. And I think I definitely have a loser in this entire flight. So let's go ahead and jump into this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in my seventh place was going to be glass number six. I said that this was bitter. It had a sweet note to it but the dominant note was just overall bitter and I didn't like anything really on the finish. It was sweet. All of those notes of a port are there. If you like a, if you like port flavored whiskeys, this is definitely one that you can try, but I think the bitterness kind of put it, you know, down below everything else. So in seventh place, I was drinking Thomas S. Moore. So Thomas S. Moore was the bourbon. Not, not the biggest fan of this whatsoever. So coming in sixth place is going to be glass, sorry, excuse me, glass number two. And there was a bitter note in this one that I picked up in this glass as well. There's a grapefruit note and a zesty citrus note that I don't particularly care for. And to be honest, I thought this had a little bit more or a little bit too much oak for my liking. So in glass number two, no surprise at all, red breast number 27. I've said this to everybody that has tried this. It is just about my least favorite whiskey that I have in my entire collection. And unfortunately, it is also the most expensive one that I have in my collection. 
There's just something about that bitter grapefruit note that doesn't sit right with me whatsoever. So that was in sixth place. In fifth place is gonna be right next to it. And what I said here was that there was a, a, a balance of sweet and spice, but the grapefruit note that I got in this one is it also kind of came out in this one a little bit, but the vanilla and the chocolate notes and that prune note put this one over this one. So in fifth place, I was drinking. Oh, <laughs> all right, so that, that kind of makes sense. This is the Red Breast Towny. Is it Towny Port? So I'm wondering if these two are closely related. Because apparently, as it turns out, I'm not a big fan of this one as well, but I definitely like it more than the 27. So then in fourth place, we're looking at glass number one. So I said this was piney, it was sweet, it was the middle of the road. I do get good red fruit notes, so that whole, all of that port that is in here is also coming out rather well. It's good, it's not great. It's number four, uh, Midwinter Night's Dram. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, that is definitely the rye. And I think it kind of just fell into the middle of the pack. It's not great, it's not bad, so it's in fourth place. In third place, I ended up going with glass number five, and this stood out to me as the most traditional, like, sherry cask finish. The raisins, dates, figs, and plums. And if you are not new to this channel, you know that's kind of what I'm liking, but I'm shying away from it a little bit, and I'm kind of uh, leaning a little bit more towards the ex-bourbon profile rather than those big sherry bombs. The prune note that the port gives this is also in here, and that elevated a little bit more than the others. So in third place, I was drinking the Glendronic Portwood. All right, so that kind of makes sense. With Glendronic, I really do like the Glendronic Pedro Jimenez Oloroso casks that they use, and that's not surprising that it's in third place. So I'm just kind of calculating in my head what's left. So in second place, I ended up putting glass number one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I put glass number four. I said that this was much different than most of them. This gave me bourbon vibes, caramel, vanilla, cherry, tobacco, chocolate, and then you throw in the port note in here and the ABV was borderline too much for me. And I think that's why it pushed this one down to second place. I have an idea of what this one is. I thought it was the Angel's Envy and it is. So the Angel's Envy cask strength. And based on what I was tasting, my profile today seemed to be kind of leaning a little bit more towards subtlety and depth of character or depth of flavors. And glass number seven had everything that I liked. It was balanced with the sweet. There was a good amount of chocolate. The bitterness and the tobacco all hit me really well. The raisins, dates, figs, and plums, or the prune note was all there, but it wasn't overpowering. This is the Westland Washington Port. I'm telling you, Westland, if you haven't had any Westlands, they, I believe, are out of Seattle. If you haven't had any Westlands, I highly suggest you guys try them out. Now, I understand that these are single casks. They're not widely available. I stumbled into Total Wine and More, and this was just sitting on the shelf one day, and I snagged it, and I'm very happy that I did. So there you have it. That is my port lineup. If you have any suggestions at all for any other port finished whiskeys, let me know in the comments down below. Where do you stand as far as port finished whiskeys go? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And if you have had any of these, what do you think of them? And before I go, again, a reminder, if you are interested in winning this flight, the rules for this giveaway are in the description below. Just like always, you gotta be 21 years of age or over. I have to be able to verify that age somehow, some way. It's gotta be something 
in the United States. You have to have a shipping address in the United States. I can't ship overseas. And if you're interested in donating to the channel, every $5 will get you one entry into this giveaway. I will run the giveaway until April 30th. And then on my two year channel anniversary on Wednesday of my Sip It or Skip It segment, I'll go ahead and announce the winner. So here is a preemptive thank you for contributing to the channel. I really appreciate every single one of my subscribers. And if you are not a subscriber and you like this information, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. I produce videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And wherever you are at in your journey, I hope you are enjoying it. And then until the next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Try to get a Westland. They're good.